In this video, I'm going to show you how to set your paper up to draw three value scales, and you'll have room for two spheres. The only reason we're drawing two squares for two spheres is in case you don't like your shading on the first one and you want to try the second. Uh, first thing we're going to do is measure in one inch from each of the sides of your paper. Put marks, a couple marks, uh, and then draw one inch borders all around the four sides of your paper. Next, and there's a diagram on uh, the presentation in our module for week 10. You'll see that you're going to measure in five and a half inches. So you're going to put a mark at five and a half inches, another one a little bit further down. You're also going to put a mark measuring in from the side of the paper uh, at 19 inches. So I'm going to put a couple marks here, 19 inches, 19. And again, your measurements are going to start at the side of the paper, the outside edge, not the inside border that you just drew. Once you put those marks there, you're going to be drawing inch and a half lines with a quarter inch between. The reason for that is the top bar will have one and a half inch squares, and the other two bars are going to be long rectangles just one and a half inches high. So here's how you do it. I'll show you the easy way. I'll show you how I do it. So what I do is I line up the zero with the outside border and then I look for one and a half inches, put a mark there, and then the line between one and a half inches and two inches, that's a quarter inch, that center line right there between one and a half and two, I put a line there. Then Here's what I do, it's a tricky part. I take my ruler and I make it even with the first mark. I do the same thing. Put a mark here, one and a half, another mark here at the quarter, quarter inch right there, and then uh, again make a mark here at one and a half. After I do that, I'm gonna oops, I'm gonna first draw these lines here. So I've got one, two, three, and then after that I'm going to connect those lines. One with a quarter inch, so they're inch and a half high, and a quarter inch between them. Alright, the bottom two value scale bars are going to stay um, clear, no lines in them, but the top one what I'm going to do is I'm going to put uh, marks at one and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, ten and a half, and twelve. I'm going to do the same thing twice. One and a half, three, four and a half, six, seven and a half, nine, uh, nine and a half, twelve. So for those of you who uh, like math, you probably figured out what I'm doing is uh, there. It's every you know, it's one and a half plus one and a half plus one and a half. And the way I think about it is, it's like the three times table. You know, one, three, nine, twelve, etc. And then halfway between those numbers. So one and a half, three, four and a half, six. Anyway, I don't know about you, but that's, that's how my head works about numbers. All right, now, I'm going to get ready to do these squares, two squares on the bottom, super easy. Uh, they're going to start seven inches down. And again, you're going to find this diagram on the, uh, on the, uh, on the last slide of our presentation that's, that's posted on modules, week 10. All right, all I'm going to do here is I measured seven inches down from the upper edge of the paper not the border, upper edge. Now I'm going to measure over 11 and a half inches and then uh, 12 and a half inches. So 11 and a half inches from the outside border is right here. 12 and a half inches from the outside border is there. 11 and a half inches. I think I meant to say from the outside edge of the paper 
not the inside border. So again, all the measurements are based on the outside edge of the paper. Okay, you just happen to draw those inch borders first. And there you have it. It's all laid out. We're ready to start our uh, shading. In this video, I'm going to show you how to shade the value scales. Now, in order to do that, it would be best if you had a variety of pencils. And those pencils uh, range from uh, the light H, a hard H pencil, to a 2, to a, uh, sorry, to an HB pencil, 2B pencil, 3B, 4B, and also a 6B pencil. Uh, if you don't have those pencils, if you didn't get a chance to purchase them, it would be great if you could purchase them online. Uh, you could do that through uh, Blick, that's what I would recommend. Or uh, hopefully at home you have maybe an ebony pencil that you can use. And also uh, HB is just like a regular number two pencil. So to start off, the first value scale, each different square will have a darker value and it's going to progress from light to dark. Okay, so I'm going to start off with the H pencil, and as you see, I'm using that overhand grip. And when I'm trying to shade, and this type of shading is called hatching, it all goes in one direction. You can see for the light hatching, I'm gripping the pencil far back, and I'm using an overhand grip. Now I'm starting to press down a little bit harder for that second value. And I would say maybe do the first two squares with an H. Now, I'm going to switch to an HB pencil. And again, using that same overhand grip. And I'm not pressing down too far. It doesn't matter to me if you go outside the borders of the uh, squares a little bit. And I think that's, that's about the right next interval for the next one. Uh, this one, I'm going to start pushing down harder. Now with this exercise, I don't want you to use an eraser. So what you're doing is you're learning how to use different pencils with different harnesses and also the pressure of your hand. And you're really connecting uh, your, your, uh, your eyes and your uh, hand. It's really working on eye-hand coordination and working with that pressure. Now I'm going to switch to a 2B pencil. Okay, and with this softer pencil, 2B, B stands for black, you want to let, you want to let the, the pencil do the work. You, don't, you shouldn't have to work too hard in getting that darker. So uh, these are 2B. I think they're both going to be 2B. Uh, and those two are HB. Now here, I'm using a slightly different grip of my pencil. Can you see how I'm holding it like that? And that is so I have a little bit more con control and so I can go darker. All right, I think I'll switch to a 3B now. And so the 3B pencil will be even darker than the 2B because the uh, graphite is softer. Okay, pushing down harder, that's a 3B. Um, now we're up to the 4B, so that was 3B. This is a 4B right here. Oops, I usually break something during every demo, by the time the pencil point broke. I like sharpening pencil points when I'm doing this type of shading with the X-Acto knife, so I get a nice long piece of graphite at the end. Finally, for the last square, I'm going to use a 6B. Okay. So I use hatching. Hatching means I'm going in one direction. Now. In the uh, shading presentation I showed you, if you look at Leonardo's hatching, he always goes the same direction. And I think that you'll find that to be the case with you too. You'll, you'll favor one direction over the other. For me, I like to go this direction. I think if you're left-handed, you might want to go the other way. Now for the other two value scales, you're going to do a gradual progression. And this is going to be a little bit different than the first one. You're going to start with an H pencil or the hardest, you know, if you only have an HB, that's okay. I don't recommend using anything lighter than an H. If you use lighter pencils than the H, 
the points of the uh, graphite is so hard that it can make indentations in your paper. And when that happens, uh, then you go, try to go to shade over it and you end up having a uh, white line showing. Okay, so I did a wash of value with that H pencil. Now I'm gonna jump in there with an HB pencil and I want a gradual transition. So these last two shading exercises, these value scales are all about learning technique using the different pencils and learning how to apply different pressure. And for these bottom ones, I really want you to get a gradual transition from light to dark. And I'll carry this out a little bit further. Okay, and I'm gonna push down a little bit further as I work back this way. Okay, I think I'm ready to switch to a 2B. I know what you're thinking, to be or not to be. And as I'm working, and on this scale, what I'm doing is I am trying to match the value of the square on top without leaving a line between the different values. So the, square at the, the squares at the top, on the top value scale, they have jumps in value from one scale, from one uh, square to the next, you know, different, different intervals right? Kind of like notes on a scale. Now the second and third uh, are going to be like a gradual uh, fading into uh, darkness or lightness, however you want to think about it. Okay, I'm grabbing the 3B pencil now and I'm working on that 3B where I have the 3B on the top and right now I'm trying to match the value of the 3B but I'm pulling it all the way over. So I'm pulling it all the way over like that. All right, that looks pretty darn close. All right, I'm gonna switch off now to the 4B. And now I am definitely applying some pressure, but as I'm applying a pressure and trying to match the value that's right above where I'm working now, as I'm working back into the value scale, I'm lightening up on the pressure. So, you know, you're gonna get really, really aware of how much pressure you're exerting. Okay, time for the 6B. Okay, so I'm going to start the 6B at the very end. And I'm going to push down quite hard with that 6B pencil to get a really, really good dark, 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 solid black. And then I'm going to lighten up as I go. So that is the value scale um, that gets darker gradually. Now, as I'm looking at it, I think I want to fix this area in here a little bit. So I'm going to go back in there with a 3B, smooth that out a little bit, see how it all blends together now. And I may want to go back in with a 2B and work that up down in here. Okay, so now for the final, so I'm just blending a little bit, going back. And I assessed it, I looked at it, I thought that there were some jumps in value, you don't want any jumps in value. Uh, so I just uh, I kind of blended it together with the shading. All right, so you'll notice I'm not doing any smudging at all. The reason we're learning this type of technique is it's a, a wonderful, sophisticated way to draw. But you can also use this technique when you're using pen. You can also use this technique if you're doing printmaking and you're making um, etchings or engravings. Now, you probably notice I'm doing something slightly different. I'm using cross hatching. So, cross hatching is where you do your hatching in one direction and then you cross it. That's why it's called cross hatching. Now, I am not a fan of cross hatching in a 90 degree angle. That's enough of the uh, H. I'm going to work with the HP now. So, what I do is I, I keep my same angle that uh, feels uh, just feels very, very natural for me because I've done this so many times. And, you know, it's not going to feel natural for you in the beginning. This is a skill that you're going to develop. <clears throat> and uh, remember what we were talking about in the beginning of our class, how it takes practice, you know, to build those neural pathways so that this will feel natural, like believe it or not, because like when you first start, you'll be like, what am I doing? What's my hand doing? What's happening here? 
So, okay, so again, I'm cross-hatching here, going a couple different directions. I'm trying to match the values that are above it. It's time for me to switch to a 2B, but not before I do a little bit more of a wash. You can see that I really don't care about staying inside of the borders, okay? That's not what this exercise is about. I am now gonna to switch to a 2B pencil, and I'm gonna start working in that 2B section here with my uh, same direction that I like, and then I'm, I'm going more in a vertical. So I'm doing some hatching in a vertical and also cross hatching in that same angle. Okay, now I need to go darker. So I'm gonna start applying more pressure here and I'm gonna go back this way too. So now pretty soon I'm gonna start crossing in a third direction. Maybe I'll just start doing it now a little bit. Notice how I'm holding the pencil. I'm still not using that type of grip that you would use if you're, you know, printing or writing or that kind of thing. Okay, time to switch to a 3B. All right, here I go. Now I'm really going to go for it. I'm going to go fast. All right, but now I'm lightening up. As I go here, I'm lightening up. Now I'm going to cross. I'm going to do some cross hatching in here. Okay, so when you're Doing cross hatching, you always start with hatching and then you start crossing it. Now I'm really going to put a little bit more pressure in here because I've built so much value up with the graphite that it's uh, kind of having a hard time uh, adhering to the, the paper. All right, there I go. All right, 4B, almost done. I'm pushing down harder. I'm change up that direction. Okay, trying to match that. Match the value of the rows before. As I'm working this way, I just kind of lighten up on my pressure like that. And now the 6B pencil. Okay, so working on the cross hatching in lots of different directions to really, really build up that dark value. And I'm taking a step back. And it looks like my value scale has pretty even gradation, although I think I want to work a little bit more right in there. So I always step back, assess my work, and if I see any jumps in value, I'll get back in there with the appropriate uh, pencil, and then I'll work a little bit more. Okay, please complete these value scales before you attempt the shaded sphere.